Okay, good evening. As you can see, I have uh, Home Designer Pro 2012 open with just a, an untitled plan. And I put in some doors and windows. I'm going to go over here to uh, Dimension Tools. I've got mine set up in the old-fashioned way. You can set it up either way from uh, Edit Preferences. <clears throat> but anyway, this suits me. So I'm going to use Auto Exterior Dimensions. and Left click. And you'll see that uh, the dimensions go to, let's zoom in so we can really see this. Yeah, click on that dimension and you can see the spot. It's right on the edge of the uh, framing. <coughs> and the uh, frame sides of the windows and doors are located by these auto dimensions. <coughs> That's because out of the box, you go to Edit Default Settings, Auto Exterior Dimensions. Click on Edit once that's selected. And you'll see Wall Dimension Layer. That's the edge of the uh, framing. And then over here under Openings, Size is selected by default. And Primary Wall Side. I didn't do anything like that. Let me put an interior wall in. We'll do that again. You'll see what that setting is for. We'll put one interior wall in. Okay, we'll put in, I know this is kind of goofy, but I'm just demonstrating. Now I'll go back to this tool here and click on Auto Exterior Dimensions. And you see that the primary side, now primary side is just one side or the other. The software just selects a, quote, primary side, but it's one side or the other, other of the framing. See, here's a spot here. So that's what that setting is about. We, we don't really need this wall here. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to go back to Edit, Default Settings, Exterior Dimensions. We'll change those settings around. Make it to Surfaces. Surfaces is a hand, handy when you're measuring an existing house and uh, you don't have any blueprints to go by, and so you're, you're measuring at the house from surfaces. And sides, sides of uh, wall penetrations like doors, and windows is pretty good for remodeling. But just to change things up, I'm going to change this to centers. And we're going to check uh, both sides, both wall sides. And I can limit it to just interior walls only or otherwise. I'm just going to leave it like this. This is how you should teach yourself, by the way. You can just, uh, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about practice. You change these settings and then see what they do. And then that's how you, a good, an excellent way to learn what they do. Now, uh, I'm going to hit the escape key and get out of that. I hit the exterior dimensions again. And you'll see now that there's a, it's dimensioning to the surface of the interior wall and the surface of the ex exterior wall. And both exterior surfaces, the sheetrock layer of interior walls, because I told it to. This software doesn't really do anything on its own. It runs by settings. I'm going to center up these doors. Use the center tool from the edit. This is the edit toolbar, by the way. That's the reason I call it the edit toolbar, because that's what it is. We'll select from the edit toolbar centering tool. It gives you a precursor showing where the center of that selected object is going to go. I'm going to center this. If I center it to the inside, it'll center it between this interior wall and that wall, or outside. Hit the tool again. Let me try this again. Well, it's not, there it is. Probably picked up the wall. So you can center between interior walls or you can just center to the outside, which is what, what I kind of intended. See, there's different precursors depending on where you put your cursor. Okay, that's centered to the outside. And then this one here will center it to the outside. There it is. Okay. You see these dimensions are equal where there's no interceding walls anyway. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to Edit Default Settings. Click on Edit to change the settings. I'm going to put it back kind of where the de default is. Wall Dimension Layer, uh, Sides, and well, let's just do inter Interior Wall Centers. You can see what that does. 
and click done. You notice when I click done, nothing happens. You have to initiate the command again. And then it carries it out. Also, uh, in Dimension Default, I'm going to just click here and go to the arrow tab. Change the arrow type. I generally use this, this one. It's just a preference. There's nothing bad or good. It's just a preference. You've got, you have choices and you can elect to, to, to make those choices. I'm going to make one more change. I'm going to go edit, default settings. Now the reason I'm, <coughs> let me explain something. When you double click here, you just get manual dimension defaults. This, this covers the behavior of manually drawn dimensions. It doesn't affect the behavior of automatically drawn uh, dimension points, okay? That's the reason I keep going over here. Default settings, auto exterior. I'll put this on centers and uh, both wall size interior only. Put that little proviso in there. Click done. Everything stays where it was until I give it a new command. Okay. Now it's to the, you can see the dimension points are to the outside edge of the fr framing, not the siding. If you want to, if you want to move it over there, you can manually move these things. See how the cursor changes when I put it over the selected lo location point? Then I can left click and drag and put it wherever I want it. <coughs> I can also click on a dimension and there's this little tool here. Let's put my cursor over it, left click and drag, and it'll create a dimension point. Either to the casing over here. Do that again. See that's to the casing. I never use that, but you can use it. And there's I'll move it over to the uh, edge of the door. And to get rid of these things, you just left click and drag off the dimension string to go back where you were. So they're quite easy to use, but it takes a little practice and a little study to figure out how to make them work for you. I lost, I had that one going and then I let, let go of my mouse just a little bit too soon. I'm going to move that one over to the casing. I'm going to left click and drag that one over to the edge of the door frame. So you get the idea. And we'll get rid of that. Left click drag. Now that's all, all, I, all this tutorial here is about is auto, uh, automatic, you know, dimension settings. Some of these settings affect all the dimensions, like this arrow one over here under manual defaults. This changes it globally. And there's lots of different arrows to pick from if you like, you know, something else. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these tabs. Uh, they're covered in the reference manual, and I recommend to you taking a, a few minutes, uh, a few minutes at a time, and, and read up and find out what these settings do. And, uh, okay, like format here. I will show you something a little bit about that. I'm going to change, open this this one dimension here, just this one, not not setting defaults now. I'm just open this one string, and it has some things I can do. I can change the arrow type just for this one string. Pick that one there, and, ch and I can change the size of the arrow for just this string. Or you can set change change the defaults. Uh, let's see, I don't want blue. I want uh, red. Uh, it's red. Uh, extensions, I'll uh, let you read the manual about that. I'm not going to cover that. And uh, the number height. See, I can change that from the de dynamic default here to like 12 if I want to. Okay. So these are, are quite uh, editable, and uh, you should play around with them and kind of get a feel for how they work and how you can control them with the defaults and manually. And thanks for your kind attention.